Okay, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, let's go ahead and start uh, warming up real quick, shall we? I know some of y'all were probably in the last class and already warm, but just in case. Arm rolls for just getting the blood flowing, arm rolls backwards. Elbows, both directions, and wrists. Working on those hands. Good. Uh, tonight we're going to kind of build on a, uh, one of our previous videos. Uh, not necessarily build on. Sorry, I forgot to plug in the camera. <laughs> that would be fun if it cut out like five minutes from now. Uh, we're not going to necessarily build on, uh, but we're going to utilize one of our previous videos uh, and kind of build off that one. So, real quick, let's run through some combos. Ready stance and fighting stance. Once again, we're going to do a uh, five per side. Feel free. Uh, when this goes live, to a uh, pause it when you're training on your own, and uh, do as many as you want per side. Keep in mind, train both sides evenly. Hey, uh, you don't want to be a, uh, a one-sided fighter. We train to, for the most part, be ambidextrous when it comes to striking. So, lead hand jab, rear hand punch with a pivot. My count, one. Three. Four. Five. Good, switch, one, two, three, four, five, good, switch, lead hand, horizontal elbow, followed by a hammer fist, lead hand, horizontal elbow, followed by a hammer fist, one, two, three, four, five, Switch, one, two, three, four, five. And notice how I change up my hand placement on these techniques. Uh, sometimes I'll throw a nice tight hammer fist, uh, predominantly aiming at the jaw or the temple. Uh, sometimes I feel like mixing it up. And I'll go an open hand, backhand. Uh, I think this is more, you know, along the lines of a uh, net chop. So feel free to uh, mix it up on your own. Uh, vertical elbow, hammer fist down. One, two, three, four, five. Switch. Three, four, five, switch. Good. Uh, let's step backwards for this one. We're going to move a little bit using our feet. Uh, I like to utilize this one, say for like a 360 defense. I'm throwing a block. So I'm going to drive in, throw that block, strike into the opposite shoulder, taking that elbow down, boom, downward elbow. Downward elbow is going to basically go whatever uh, to wherever target I have available at the time. So, if Bob here is coming in with a, uh, a stick or a haymaker or something along, the, along those lines, and I block here, chances are that downward striking elbow is going to go to the clavicle. Go into the clavicle. Or if I strike to the face, Boom, and he's rocked backwards, may come down to the solar plexus, the sternum, somewhere along those lines. So driving forward, 360 defense, downward elbow strike, reset. Two, one, two. Three, four, five. Switch. One, 
two, three, four, five. And notice that my striking hand placement changed. Uh, coming up through the ranks, crowd guys, of course, always evolving, always changing. Uh, when I first got started, 360 defense, we were always striking to the face. We were always striking to the face. Two problems arise from that. One, in training with other individuals, you're always afraid of hitting them. So what we do, we punch off the center line, or we stop our punches short, because of course we don't want to hit our training partners in the face. The problem with that is muscle memory. You do how you train. And when we train, get that repetition, we do this all the time, or that all the time, well, frankly, that's what was starting to happen in the real world. People were off shooting. The benefit with striking the shoulder, whether it be a high block, whether it be a low block, is even in training, you can hit somebody in the shoulder. So you can still get that uh, real-time tactile feel, and it works in the real world. Because you got to remember, most strikers, when they punch, boom. They have the tendency of stepping off the center line with that head. Even with a haymaker, boom, they have the tendency of moving off that center line. So the head may not always be there. But the shoulder is always going to be attached to that uh, elbow and arm. So that's why we strike to the shoulder a lot of times now is just because it's always going to be there. Not saying training to the head is not very important. <coughs> Excuse me. Roundhouse punch to the head. Once again, making sure forearm is parallel to the ground. Elbow is driving behind the fist. Here, uh, a lot of times I see this. And the problem with that is there's no mass behind that fist. So when you hit, for reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when you hit, one, you're hitting with the wrong knuckles. First off, you're hitting with these knuckles, so they're broken. And two, you're losing all of that force when you hit. Because when I hit Bob, he's hitting back. But when you drive that hand or that elbow behind that hand, it's not going anywhere. So they are absorbing significantly more force having that elbow position behind their hand. So horizontal elbow, stepping in, elbow to the face sternum, whatever they have open. So, one, two, reset. Two, three, four, five, switch. One, two, Keep in mind that when we're driving, you don't want to get in the habit of doing the splits. Front foot moves six inches, back foot moves six inches. Now, I'm stepping into a wider stance because that's the beauty about crop, is it fits whatever your background is. My background is, of course, traditional uh, martial arts. So I have the tendency when I strike, boom, to step into a bigger stance but I fight out of a one wide stance. So keep that in mind. Feet together, we're gonna do a block, boom, and a strike. So you're standing here having a conversation with somebody out of your ready stance, and they take a swing at you. So, standing here having a conversation, one, two, three, now make sure that you are bending the knees. Too many times we have the tendency of leaning. Head over shoulders, over hips, over feet. Head over shoulders, over hips, over feet. And the problem with the lean, is you leave yourself open to a kick. So make sure that you are dropping down and not leaning forward. Three, four, five. 
Okay, good. Other hand. Other hand. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Sorry, one second. Please stop. Go watch a movie. Okay. Uh, my son's making a, a wonderful faces at me from the office. Okay. Stepping backwards. Defensive punch, stepping forward. Defensive punch, stepping forward, stepping backwards, starting with the right leg. One, two, three, four, five. Switch, once again, making sure you're bending at the knees and not at the hips. One, two, Three, four, five, good. Uh, that one is along the lines of, they were right on top of you. You backed up, told them to back off, back off, back off, but they're still moving up on you. <laughs> so let's say three foot range. My opinion is if they break that a three foot rule, then it's time for self-defense. They may uh, already not adhere to my get back. So, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Three feet, he takes a uh, lazy haymaker swing at me, boom, and I'm dropping down. I'm dropping down under the height of that haymaker to the head, but I'm not leaning forward, I'm dropping straight down, hand up, just in case he decides to take another swing at me. Defensive punch stepping forward. Defensive punch stepping forward. This is going to be more along the lines of he's got some distance, but he has a bat or something to extend his reach. So now I cannot hit him from here stepping backwards. So now I got to step into him. Stepping into him. Once again, we're dropping below the height of that swing. That being said though, how do I know which foot to uh, step with? How do I know which foot to step with? Now, 98%, 99% of the population is right-handed. That being said, he's chances are he's gonna be swinging with his right arm. So more often than not, I'm gonna be stepping forward with my left leg. Because if I do take a stick, a baseball bat, something like that. I want to take it across the width of my back. Not necessarily going to be a big fan of taking it to the face or to the riblets. So if he has a bat and swinging it with his right hand, chances are I'm going to step forward with my left. If he has a bat and swinging it with his left hand, chances are I'm going to be stepping forward with my right. And notice knee placement. Boom. You don't want to stand into what we call a horse stance. He throws that side kick, takes out your knee, boom, you're down. Make sure that that front foot is pointed at him and you have a good bend in your knee. <coughs> so, defensive punch stepping forward. Starting with the right leg. One, two, three, Four, five, good, switch. Left side now, left side. One, two, three, four, five. Good, good. Uh, let's move on. Now, I talked about last class or the class before, or the class before, I don't remember, about visualization. Visualization is probably one of the most important aspects to training. But it's doubly important now, because a lot of us are training alone. A lot of us are training alone. So visualization is very, very important right now. Because we may not have a, a partner to train with. That being said, that does not mean you can't train your techniques. 
that's where a lot of my students get confused, whether it be my traditionalist or my Krav Maga. A technique should work, period. If you were going to train a technique, I don't care what it is, I don't care if it's a uh, traditional uh, leg sweep, it should work across the board. Otherwise, it's not a good technique. I've never seen this movie, but enough people have sent me this section of the movie. Napoleon Dynamite, when they're doing martial arts, grab me. No, 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 don't grab me there, grab me here. Oh, no, 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 don't grab me like that, grab me like this. That should not be part of your martial arts training. Now, I understand that there are times like if we're practicing this very specific joint lock, and that's what I want you to do, is that one technique, that one joint lock over and over and over, of course I gotta grab you a certain way. You know, because if somebody reaches out and grabs me here, with this grip, I'm going to take him down into a sea lock. No questions about it, no ifs, ands, ors about it. That's a sea lock. If they reach out and grab me here, I'm going to take him to an S lock. That's just what that situation dictates. But if I'm going for, say, something like a leg sweep, I don't care if he steps in and punches me with the lead hand. I don't care if he steps in and punches me with the rear hand. I'm going for a leg sweep. The difference is, is that leg sweep going to be comfortable on the uke or not? That's not my problem. So, visualization is key to doing what we do. There are so many, only so many variations that somebody can put to what are we doing tonight? Choke. There is so many they can stand and lock their elbows. They can bend their elbows and be very close. They could kind of off-center it a little bit favoring their left hand or their right hand, but there are only so many variations to this choke. I mean one hand, but what changes between one hand and two hand? Nothing except one hand is way easier, but the technique is still the same. So when you're training traditional Krav Maga self-defense techniques or one steps, whatever you want to call them, you have to be able to visualize that opponent in front of you. So right now we're going to visualize standing choke. An individual, whether they're short or tall or same height, that's up to you, is actually standing there choking you. Keep in mind though, shorter people, uh, being the bad guy, like if somebody was attacking me and they're shorter than me, is always going to be harder. Always going to be harder. Uh, I tell my students all the time, people with a lower center of gravity, they are the ones that have the advantage. So, choke. Somebody walks in and choke. First off, we kind of did this a couple classes ago. Somebody's walking up to you here. Never let them achieve choke. Never let them achieve choke. That is one of the failings in the way that we train is we stand there like Bob, arms hanging at the side, and allow them to achieve choke. Why do we do that in class? Well, because you got to train the choking technique. But I will never allow anybody to just walk up, whether they're Frankensteining it here, or whether they're coming in, I'm not going to stand there and let them achieve choke. We train these techniques, let's say he takes a punch, he manages to slip it in, and then he goes for the choke, and I have no choice. If you see somebody walking in for a choke, Frankensteining it, Oh, that's why we practice this technique. So that they cannot achieve choke. They will <coughs> knock out their own windpipe before they get their hands around my throat. Or if we're standing here having a conversation, he's raising his hands to put me in choke. We actually did that technique earlier. Boom, oh, I'm gonna uh, knock those hands out of the way as I'm striking the groin. Boom, oh, and you may have noticed, you may not have, I duck my head when I stand up. Why do I duck my head? Uh, the main reason being, once again, visualization, I just hit my opponent in the nuts. Chances are what's going to be the natural human reaction to get hit in the groin? Oh. So the last thing I want to do is just stand up into him as he's falling forward. So what do I do here? 
boom, I dug my head as I come up. That way I'm getting a nice strike underneath the chin. So standing choke visualization, standing choke visualization. Somebody has you in a choke. First thing you do, hands come up. De-escalate the situation. Man, calm down, you don't want to do this. This is not what you want to do. His hands, choke is achieved. I'm going to take my thumbs out of the equation, hook the hands, and strike, to the, and strike with the knee. So one more time, hands come up, strike, strike. Watch from the back. So hands come up, boom, boom. Notice I'm not pulling, my elbows don't come up. It is straight, sorry, it's straight, boom, lats. You use your back to pull your arms apart, not your elbows, not your elbows. So, one more time, hands come up, slap, back, strike. Reset, visualize that opponent. Visualize whether his elbows are bent. Visualize whether his elbows are locked. Visualize whether or not his elbows are up, because believe it or not, that will make a little bit of a difference. But overall, the technique does not change. So, hands come up, one, two, grab him by the back. Once you strike him to the face, grab him by the back. Groin, head, hammer fist. It's gonna look like this. He's choking. Hands come up. One, two, grab him by the back. Groin, head, hammer fist. Groin, head, hammer fist. Visualize your opponent's long monkey arms. That there's no way you're gonna get that knee to that groin. Hands come up. One, two. That time I threw a kick instead of a knee. Grab him by the back. Groin, head, hammer fist. From the side. My opponent walks, has hands around my neck, hands come off. No, I'm not, we're not walking backwards. Uh, choking against the push is a little bit different. You stand here choking me. One, two. Grab him by the back. Groin, head, hammer fist. From the front, you stand there choking. One, two, one, two, three. Notice how I only usually ever train one side when it comes to these techniques. Krav Maga builds off your natural body's reaction. Your body's gonna react how it's gonna react. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. If stepping back with your right feels comfortable, Step back with your right. Step back with your left feels comfortable. Step back with your left. Unless it's one-handed choke, even then it's not gonna make a difference. So, scratch out, I just said that. So, visualization one more time. One second. So visualization, uh, visualizing that your opponent has his uh, hands around your throat, hands come up, you want to look small, slap, one, grab, groin, head, hammer fist. Uh, if you have to, close your eyes. Close your eyes if you have to. Visualize that opponent. Make every movement count. That's the thing with Krav. Everything that we do has a rhyme or reason to it. You, now, when you're hooking, take your thumbs out of the equation. It's a slap. So, uh, let's see if I can get this. When you're training, I want to hear your fingers slapping as you do the technique. Too many times, this turns into a grab and we pull them open. It is a slap. It's a slap. Uh, guys, we're coming up on the end, so please, if you have any questions, uh, question of the night. Uh, for those that are new, uh, I just like closing out every class with a question. Uh, please try to stump me. I would love to have a question that I don't know the answer to, that I legitimately have to say, I don't know. So please uh, ask me a hard one. But 
We're going to do the technique just a few more times. Hands come up, defensive position. Talk them down, man. Calm down. You don't want to do this. If they're squeezing to the point where you can't even breathe, of course I'm not going to talk them down. I'm just going to bring hands up. The reason why we don't come with techniques all the way from the ground, that is too far of a movement. Coming all the way from down here is too far of a movement to hide. This will calm down is natural human reaction. That's why we want to go from there. So, slap, one, grab, groin, head, hammer fist. Uh, now, we throw a uh, groin, head, hammer fist on, their, on every technique. Just because that's easy to teach, it's good repetition, and it works. But keep in mind, anything can be thrown in here. The technique that does not change, that does not get modified, one, two. That is what works. Slap their hands away, kick to the groin, strike to the face. That's what works. Everything that comes after, icing on the cake. So, some of us are traditionalists. Uh, I have told, I've said this many times, I'm a huge fan of takedowns. I love takedowns. Hands come up. One, two. I have control of this hand. I'm stepping in, leg sweep, taking them to the ground. What am I, I love, I love leg sweeps. So practice that if you need to. One, two, three. Taking them to the ground. Uh, some of us may like joint locks. This one may be a little bit hard to visualize. But when I hook here, one, two, I maintain control of this hand. So now I can, as I'm striking and stepping in, I can maintain control of this hand, boom. Take it down to the mat. Now, visualization. I know that's hard for you to picture in your head, but that's what it is. So, hands come up. Hands come up. Uh, let's do a little bit more of a complicated one. One that I don't even want to do on camera, but I'll do it anyway because this was one of a, uh, my other students' favorite takedowns. Not mine. I don't advocate doing this in a real fight, but it was one of his favorite takedowns. So you're here. One, two, stepping in, here, boom. I hate scissor takedown, but that was one of his favorites. Uh, that one, coming around here, hooking, jumping, uh, right out to the back of the knee, scissor takedown. I believe it's on the YouTube channel. I hate scissor takedowns, but it was one of his favorites. So if that's what you like doing, add that. But visualization is key. Uh, any questions? No question of the night. So other than that, guys, great class. Uh, keep practicing. Here, here, groin, head, hammer, fist, or whatever combination that you may like. Uh, those combinations that we did last week, once again, this is your chance to start adding them together, throwing them in the mix. Prime example, one, two, three, four. It still works. It still works. So other than that, guys, you all have a great evening. I'll see everybody Thursday. Like if you liked. Subscribe if you haven't. Other than that, guys, you all have a great evening.